Hello YouTube, today in this new installment of the Hypertrophy series, we're going to tackle something that needs to be said now so that we can discuss the matter with more tranquility. And it is the fact that there is no such thing as an hypertrophy rep range. It does not exist. You can get big doing reps of one for sets of one to 10. You can get big doing uh, reps of eight to 12. You can get big doing sets of 20 reps. It all works. Why? Because stress applied to the muscle is going to result to hypertrophy, no matter how many sets it takes to achieve muscular fatigue. That being said, because we're not made of money and we actually have to spend our time intelligently in the gym to get maximal results, hypertrophy rep ranges are going to be strictly defined by your ability to achieve maximum recoverable volume as efficiently, safely, and fast as possible. Which means what? It means that there are certain tactics that might result in hypertrophy that we're not going to promote on this channel. Why? Because they're going to be too time consuming, they're going to be too dangerous, meaning that the, the injury rate is going to be extremely long, they're going to be uh, tough to put in place, all of these are going to be factors that are going to decide what we define as an hypertrophy rep range. There are different schools of thoughts when it comes to that. Uh, you will have people who think that because powerlifters usually stay within low rep ranges for their strength work, as they should, they're not experiencing any hypertrophic benefits from that, which is not true. They're still growing from it. But because the overall tonnage of their work is lower than it would be if they did more reps, they don't get as much hypertrophy as they get strength. And it's the same difference for bodybuilders. People who bodybuild, who stay in very high rep ranges with actual weight and not just baby weight, are going to be strictly bigger than they are stronger because they're training to develop that quality. It's a, different, it's a difference of goals that are going to define if you are more on the side of intensity or volume, but you need a little bit of both. Very uh, prominent and uh, successful powerlifters don't just do sets and uh, reps of one to three. They train different rep ranges because they also need muscle size. We're, we're all doing different things with, our, with the muscles we have, but we still want to develop it, whether it is for show or for uh, an actual purpose of moving a weight it still needs to grow. But then the, uh, the ability of the muscle to perform a certain task is going to be defined by the specific uh, way we train the muscle. It doesn't mean that a bo the bodybuilder cannot be strong. It doesn't mean that a powerlifter cannot be uh, aesthetic. You, know, you can be some level of both. You are going to decide what, which is more important to you and you're going to tailor your training towards that. So, if you want to tailor your training towards that, which is hypertrophy on this channel and not strength, what do you want to do? You want to put in your program rep ranges that are going to result in maximum tonnage, all right? Now, when I say tonnage in that case, I mean tonnage from working sets, sets that should be within a good intensity window. It shouldn't be too easy, it shouldn't be too hard. All of those techniques to define what a, fit, a suitable hypertrophy or rather intensity window is going to be and the number of sets and reps are going to be defined in this series. But beyond that, do not let yourself be limited within a certain rep range. Doing only uh, sets of 8 to 12, no matter how many sets you do, is not going to be beneficial for, your, for muscle gains. Why? Because you need a variety of rep ranges that your body and muscles experience different level of intensities. That being said, intensity is not just defined by the weight. It can be defined by the lifting variation. It can be defined by the type of bar you use, if you use a superset or not. But all of these things are, I just cited are variations of intensity, just like the rep range. So why would you limit yourself when it comes to rep range? You wouldn't just do uh, barbell movements for your chest. You're going to do dumbbell, push-ups, you're going to do dips, whatever. You're not going to think that just sticking to one implement is enough. 
So think about it the same way with rep ranges. There are tools. And you're going to find that certain muscles are going to respond strictly better to higher rep ranges. Some of them are going to respond better to lower. You're going to find that certain muscles should not be worked in lower rep ranges uh, for injury, uh, injury prevention purposes or just because it's not efficient. And others are going to respond very well to, low inten to a high intensity training. This is dependent on you. I'm never going to tell you that a certain muscle for sure needs to be trained that way. For example, for me, my armstrings respond very well to higher rep ranges and uh, their muscular endurance is high enough that I like to throw a lot of sets and reps, reps at them. I also try to not train them in a smaller rep range because I think it's not worth it for me, for my muscular hypertrophy. You might be different. But you have to keep in mind that there is no such thing as an hypertrophy rep range. Don't let yourself get sucked into it. A rep range is part of the recipe that leads to tonnage. All right. What matters is the tonnage you get at the end. How you got to the tonnage is not relevant as long as intensity is respected, as long as the lift you did actually challenged you. Now, I will be making videos about it. In my opinion, it is also true that certain rep ranges, as I explained at the beginning, fall outside of the hypertrophy window because they're not practical or because they're too dangerous or they're not easy to accumulate. Example, doing 10 sets of one rep with super heavy weight. Yes, you might accumulate a lot of uh, uh, very high quality tonnage right there because you're doing high intensity work. But how feasible is that? If you do 10 reps of a very high percentage, chances are either your form is going to suffer, you're going to get injured, or you just won't be able to do it because it's 10 sets, right? It's 10 sets of one. Change that to get a similar amount of tonnage where you actually rep the weight. You can do three sets of more reps with a lower weight that's going to still have you in an intensity window that's valuable, right? Between 70 and 85% and result in better muscle hypertrophy because it's actually feasible and it's less dangerous. On the other hand, doing super high reps with super low weight, one is going to bore you out of your mind, two, it's not going to be conducive to progress because you're not really pushing heavy weight, you're going to be limited by cardiovascular endurance Eventually, your, your muscles are not going to get tired. The system that feeds the muscle with oxygen and blood will. And at the end of the day, if you have to train every single body part with that type of high volume, low intensity training, how much time is your training going to take? If I did that, I would be in the gym for five hours. I don't have time for that. So these are by default disqualified as, as hypertrophy rep range. It doesn't mean that they cannot be applied to boost certain work you're going to do in the hypertrophy rep range, but they shouldn't be your bread and butter for muscle size. We are going to define the terms that we expressed in this video in much more details, but thank you for watching and have a good day.